What's going on everybody? My name is Rico. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my channel is about vlogs, series and tutorials. And in this episode, it's time for another two dudes hanging out. And I've got Burke Cullen from the United States as a guest to my show. What's poppin'? How's it going? What's poppin' everybody? My name is Burke Cullen. I'm a freelance filmmaker. I also make YouTube videos on my YouTube channel. It's kind of all about my journey through life as a creator. I, uh, I do weekly challenges, weekly filmmaking challenges on the channel. So if you want to come over, check it out, it'd be greatly appreciated. All right, cool. Thank you for introducing yourself. Everybody, I'll put the link to his uh, channel in the description down below. So be sure to check him out as well. Uh, thanks for being here on my uh, on my show. You're the third guest um, of Two oh. Dudes Hanging Out. It's the third episode. Um, the first question I got for you is, what got you into creating? What got me into cre just like creating in general or, or video? Anything you like. So if there is anything else, because you're a professional filmmaker, obviously, uh, but if there's more stuff that you do or that you started with, Feel free to say that as well. Okay. Um, yeah. I think so. For me, I think it started started probably early on, maybe in like middle school or high school. For me, uh, I was doing a lot of. I actually had been doing YouTube videos, not on this channel, like way, way back in the day. We used to do kind of just just funny stuff here and there with like snowboarding and tech decks and just random stupid videos, like Jackass or, or just. Fun stuff. Fun, yeah, I would say more, we were younger, so I I don't even know if, I don't even know if Jackass was a thing at that point, but I mean, kind of in that vein, but not as like extreme. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So that was yeah. We used to do a lot of those, and then my brother and I used to recreate Star Wars on our V8, like our parents' VHS um, like camcorder. So I think I've just always I can't really pinpoint like a specific point in my life where I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to create. I just, I've always been doing it, you know, whether it's music or video or a painting, you know, I used to do draw and do painting and, and a lot when I was younger. So and then eventually you switched to uh, like videography, cinematography, stuff like that. Yeah. So I eventually it, I was able to kind of figure out what I wanted to do in, in sort of like the creative space. And that yeah. was that was definitely more in my like in my high school years was like yes I want to do I was I was playing in bands at the same time so I was like music and video um, so it it with doing these things and like figuring out what I liked to do uh, I figured out that I really enjoyed video and because I, it just feels like it's there's like it's really there's no boundaries when it comes to video in my opinion you can kind of do anything especially nowadays with all the technology we have so it's been really cool to see technology advance to a more consumer slash prosumer level um, but yeah I, I, I think like high school would be when I like really got into video you know yeah I, I hear what you say because basically what we're doing is well you do it on a professional level I do it for YouTube obviously I do have a uh, uh, a, a video production company oh yeah I started because I want to uh, take it to like a next level and do it professionally uh, but I still have to take a few steps in order for me to feel more comfortable with it um, so yeah I, I understand and the, and the great thing is that if you ask me what we can do is we can take nothing and create something out of it yeah yeah. So it all starts yeah. in our mind and then we go like, oh, well, maybe this is fun or maybe this is nice or documentaries or whatever. And then we start to shape it. And then at the end, we've got a final product that we've thought out of from A to Z, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's a really cool. I think that's a really cool aspect of just just creation in general. And especially like just me being a musician and being a content creator, videographer, filmmaker, like that. that is such a cool thing that you can take an idea that's up here, right? And you can make it into something, you know, whether it's a visual or audible thing. So I, I don't know, I've, I've always kind of been, I, I don't know if addicted is the right word, but I've always been intrigued or attracted to all types of creation because it all came from nothing at some point or it came from little to nothing, you know? And do you have like an urge that after a while I have to do something new? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Like I, I mean I, I'm always, always, always like on the next thing. Like there's always, there's always something else that needs to be done. And you know we do a lot of, 
we do a lot of client work because I also own a creative agency. We focus in video production. Um, yeah. So that's always like, that's always like, what's the next project that we got to get working on? And there's there's so much that needs to be done with client work. But also, I last year I started. That's when I started doing YouTube, and that's when I really wanted to start making videos for myself, not just videos for clients. And last year I also stopped playing in my band because it was becoming too much to juggle between uh, a band full time and you know running a business full time and then trying to do YouTube so I, I wanted to just be focused on video because I figured if I was just focused more on one thing it would help my growth in that one thing so it's just like I have to constantly be doing something otherwise I will I don't know I, I, I haven't done nothing in a while so that's like hard for me to imagine not doing anything you know yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an itch. You need a, you need a scratch. Yeah, exactly. Like it's the I, longer you wait, the more it starts to itch, and then finally you'd be like, oh, I can't stand it yeah. anymore. And then you gotta do something else, you know? Yeah, it's. I mean, it can, that can be, it could be an unhealthy thing at times. I feel so. I do have to get better at learning how to balance everything. Um, but yeah, it's just like it is like an itch, and like if you, the longer you let it sit the itchier it gets you know so that, that's a really good like metaphor for that yeah because you're talking about balance because that's another question i've got for you um since you're a professional videographer uh, how do you combine your work with your hobby so like youtube and how does it affect your uh, personal life and how do you or how did you learn to manage your time and stuff because you know i know that editing uh, takes up a lot of time like even yes. more so than just shooting stuff so I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on that yeah so well I've definitely sacrificed a lot I think in the past in the past year like I don't really hang out with too many friends anymore um, it's not really I don't know it's just like I would rather focus my time on continuing to grow and maybe that's something that I need to get better with um, I do spend time with friends like that's not like I, it's not like I don't hang out with anybody ever, but I definitely spend a lot less time than I used to with friends So my process for everything so during the day Monday through Friday That's usually when I typically try and focus on my client work um, and sometimes I'll get up Very early in the morning around five o'clock I've also like set a schedule for when I put out videos like last year was just all over the place It was a mess, but yeah, because you, you've produced a lot of videos on YouTube as well last year yeah. if I remember correctly Yeah, last year there was a couple there was a couple sections where it was like almost it was like every day for like Weeks on end and then I would take a like a, a two or three day break and then I would go go back at it for like another two or three month no two or yeah. three week long span of just daily uploading, but now it's like I still put out a lot of videos in the grand scheme of things and it's funny because I'll hear people talking about putting one video out a week and I'm like oh I only do three and they're like you're only doing three what are you taught that's a lot so yeah um, I what I so the, the the format for it is like Monday Wednesday and Friday is when I try to put a video out I don't have I don't have to put a video out every Monday Wednesday or Friday so what I'll do on Monday Wednesday and Friday is usually I'll get up at, at five o'clock in the morning to start editing those videos or finish editing those videos and that will be Monday, Wednesday or Friday and then pretty much once they're done edited that's when I'll work on the thumbnail, I'll export them and then I'll upload it to YouTube, do all the tags and stuff and then depending what time it is, sometimes it goes up at 7 in the morning, sometimes it goes up at 9, sometimes it goes up at 10 depending on, whoa, that was weird, my light just flickered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, depending on what time it is that could depend on how much time I'm gonna to spend towards like responding to comments from the previous video or the video, like if they start coming in from that video I just put out. Um, and then and then from there I'll work on client work and my fiance Jen, she's a nurse. So she works 12 hour shifts. So that does make it a little bit easier, but she only works three days a week. So that makes it easier in terms of me being able to work on the YouTube videos when she's not around because she's gone for like a longer period of time during the day so she'll usually work if she works during the day she works 7 a.m to 7 p.m she gets home around like 8 8 30. so around that time is when i'll stop working completely so i'll usually work like client videos from like nine to six or seven then i'll cook dinner and then spend the rest of the time with her but then there's other days where 
I will stop client work a couple hours earlier so that I can shoot a video. And I've kind of formatted everything else right now, so it's a lot easier, it's a lot more manageable with my time as opposed to last year. Like last year I would just go out and shoot a vlog pretty much every single day, but now I'll do a video in the office and I'll just sit here for like, a half hour or an hour so that's only like yeah because <laughs> i saw a switch in your content yeah between uh because you were out a lot last year or what i recall yes and now yeah. lately when i've watched your videos i see you uh, sitting at home a lot which is funny because i'm actually doing the same thing and i don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because you can produce great content uh, content from your house yes uh, I've yeah. got people who sent me messages like hey you need to go out more uh, why are you still in your house making videos and but yeah I get it but is there a specific reason that you decided to shoot more indoors instead of outdoors or well no well so I actually before so we moved into this place in October and before that I was still living at home with my family so it was very difficult living with like siblings and parents and we have a lot of pets and all that stuff to actually like film videos like this in a quiet place. So having now the space to actually do it where I'm not in my bedroom, cause I used to have my office in my bedroom. Um, so now that I have like my own space, it makes it a lot easier. So that, that I think is one thing. And then like you kind of said, it's just kind of like an easier thing to manage and almost be more consistent with your content now that I now that I have the space to be able to use it. So that that was one thing was like it's going to be a little bit easier for me to put out content that I still want to put out cuz I've always wanted to have like a space like this where I can just flick on the camera and just start talking. So that's one yeah. thing I really like about it. But I also will do like I will do one vlog where I go out and try and do something or I'll try to um once a week. So I still try and do that. I haven't been the best about it. I also think that last year, so I think every year there should be a different goal. And for me last year was just kind of like figuring it out. And I talked a lot about creating every day and just like finding the time to go out and shoot. So I'm basically spending about the same time now as I was last year. The only thing is it's a little bit more focused. Whereas last year was, let's go shoot for an hour this day. Let's go shoot for two hours this day. You know, whereas now it's like, we're gonna shoot this at this time from this time and then tomorrow we're gonna edit it from this time to this time so it's a little more structured whereas last last year it wasn't super structured you know yeah yeah i i hear you man it's it's funny because when i hear you talking about it i'm like i can't believe i'm doing the exact same thing basically because i start for your uh like for the entire background you know mm -hmm. last year i started uh with my youtube channel so i started in january Right, yeah. I knew right. nothing about filmmaking. Nothing. I shot a couple of pictures before, but I knew nothing about filmmaking. I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know what to use to edit. And then, uh, so last year I told myself, okay, I'm going to use this year to teach myself how to do B roll. Um, dude. Yeah, <laughs> B roll. <laughs> the, the videos about B roll that I've seen, man, it's ridiculous the amount. It's like, psh, it's out of my mind. But. Uh, so I learned how to do some b-roll, uh, I learned how to do some vlogs, uh, stuff like that. I learned myself how to, you know, edit a, 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 a nice looking video, you know. Um, and then uh, this year is all about, because I like to improve myself as well in all kinds of in different aspects. Because uh, like for instance, I'm still working on my thumbnails and I saw my click through rate go from 3.5% to 5.5%. Oh wow, nice. I nice. changed the titles a little bit. Yeah, um, I saw my watch time go up like a madman compared to what it was last year, especially when I started making tutorials uh, on Darktable, which oh, is like okay. a free version of, uh, well, it's not a free version of Lightroom, but it's an open source software program that is just as good, if not better than Lightroom, and it's free for all. Hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check that out, man. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely recommend it. So I'm making tutorials about that. And then this year is all about doing uh, things I've never done before, like the podcast. It's one of the things I like to create series. And yeah, it's it's, it's kind of funny how, how some content creators are basically doing the same thing. Like they take the first year to, 
to figure know, it out, test the water. Yeah, exactly. And then the second year they'd be like, okay, now I got to step up my game. I got to do a little bit better. I want to do, uh, I want to find and see what suits me, what I like to make and stuff like that, you know, and yeah, that's fine. I, I like it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I, I, I've definitely noticed a lot because I feel like a lot of the people that I'm at least like closer to in terms of the YouTube space, we all kind of yeah. started around the same time and everybody's now starting to like figure out their own like their own thing you know we, we, we've kind of like figured it out and i think that you, be, i did a lot of vlogs last year like i did a lot um not daily but i did a lot for just somebody who just was doing vlogs and it made me i love them and i love doing vlogs and i will always vlog like probably once a week but it made me realize that I don't want to just be a, a vlogger, you know? Like, I, I think, yeah. cause I also did other things too. I did vlogs and I did like some tutorials and some short films and stuff like that. But it made me realize that like, that's not what I am. I'm not like the vlogging guy, you know? Like I'm more, I'm more like the production, like let's go create something crazy, you know? Like let's go, like that's kind of where that Monday challenge came from yeah. because I've been doing that a lot every week and uh, that kind of came from me talking about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and trying new things but I was never really applying that other than just going out and shooting and I, st I kind of got comfortable in doing that every single day you know so I do miss doing that and I would I would like to push myself to do that a little bit more but I also understand that I've kind of like every time I go out and shoot I kind of did the same thing you know so I wasn't really changing it up and that's something uh, a lot of YouTubers uh, suffer from. What I saw last year was that a lot of content creators were putting out the same type of content. So you saw that it was all about the story, it was all about the B-roll. Yeah. Uh, and then after a while, I was just checking out YouTube like new release videos uh, in like the same space that I'm creating in and then uh, you saw that one guy would create a video about a certain to topic and then two or three days later you saw a couple of other guys or girls creating videos about the same topic and to me if you ask me they start to bury each other or basically uh, cannibalism you know yeah, yeah taking away their taking away their own momentum yeah I mean I mean that's so that I, I went into it I started YouTube and like the the cinematic vlogs with with the b-roll which i i don't refer to it as b-roll anymore but i that's like a whole nother thing that i could talk <laughs> about and that's just being like the filmmaker cinematographer like aspect of it but i like started creating that content because i enjoyed to watch it and i was like i as a filmmaker as like a freelance filmmaker and a cinematographer like i could do that that that's that's not out of my comfort zone like i know that i could do that so i enjoyed watching the content so i figured i would enjoy making the content which i did um, but then it was like right around the time that I started that everybody was doing it, you know So everybody was was putting out this same content. It was like 2019 for whatever reason everybody had a revelation like this is the like like we're gonna we're gonna cinematic vlog um, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Yeah, yeah so I, I, I felt like and I tried to do different things and I definitely think that I was doing a few things that were different from what other people were doing and I will still continue to do those things um, yeah. like I'm doing now but it's just that I felt like you hear so often on like a creative space or YouTube that you need to be unique you need to be unique to grow and and if you want to gain views and subscribers you have to be different and I, I never wanted to be like the motivation behind why I create to be views or subscribers or anything I wanted to because I started making YouTube videos because I wanted to create content for myself rather than for a client so there was that like but I always I always took that piece of information and took that as like just be yourself and like don't always mimic somebody else because it's it's the cool thing to do or it like looks good and obviously like when somebody when something becomes popular it's because so, it's different and somebody did it really well and now everybody wants to do it so i that's one of the reasons why i'm not vlogging as much it's not because i don't 
love to vlog. It's it's more or less, and I think that my vlogs have even changed a lot since last year as well. Like just the format, and now they're more of like a lifestyle thing rather than like here's a bunch of cinematic footage and then here's like a motivational like inspirational thing. Now it's just like I'm gonna go cook, or here's like me at the gym, <laughs> or here's like you know it's just like. It's just fun. It's just fun content to create, Su like super simple and fun stuff to create. And maybe I can get like a cool, a couple cool cinematic shots in there. But uh, yeah, it just kind of felt like I was getting bored with seeing the same thing, but also creating the same thing. And I didn't want to be doing the same thing that everybody else was doing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I understand because. It's not just easy as one, two, three, you know, there are a lot of aspects involved and um, for instance, if you're pretty good at something or you like creating something, should you withdraw from doing so just because it's popular and stuff like that, you know, and if it's something that you've always done before and now someone else made it big or an entire group made it big or whatever, right. should you refrain to do so? It's, it's, I can imagine it's hard. and. I think the best way, because like you said, that it was all about being unique and having your own uh, stories and stuff like that. But I think as long as you stick to yourself and what you like yeah. to make and the interest that you have, you will always be unique and the um, the the subscribers will follow uh, along eventually. You know, right. same goes for yeah. the views. Uh, everybody's got to start somewhere, uh, and then. I personally like it when um, people are uh, subscribed to my channel because uh, they like my content and uh, not because it's like a hype or a sub for sub or stuff like that. Right. And then yes. eventually the engagement will be higher, you know, and it'll stay higher and then it'll automatically give, give me more pleasure because I, I rather have like, uh, like in my personal life, I don't have a lot of friends or people around me, you know, I'm very selective about that. I like it that way, but I do know that the people that are around me, they're very loyal and I'm very loyal to them. And that's way more important for me than just to have loyalty be able to say like, oh, look, man, I got 10,000 subscribers, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I completely agree. And yeah, I don't, like, don't get me wrong, like, like, I don't want the motivation behind my creation to be about like views or subscribers like I just don't want to put yeah, yeah. a video out that's like this is gonna get me this is gonna go viral yeah. you know like <laughs> I mean there, viral right yeah. Now, yeah I mean there are videos right where, where I put it up and I'm like this maybe maybe it could happen but like that's not like I created this for that to happen but it does feel good when you do have like the loyalty like there's there's a handful of people who watch almost every single one of my videos and leave a comment on almost every single one of my videos and I mean I've seen you've commented on like a bunch of them you know and I remember I think around last year probably when I did that Cody video I think is when I started noticing you you watching but um, it just it does it it makes you feel it does make you feel good it does it does like bring a, not like a sense of validation because I like I don't need validation from others that I'm good at what I do because I think I mean I, it's good to be humble and I know that there's always room for improvement. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no like, worries. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not. Yeah, that's another rabbit hole there. But um, I just think that it like there's a sense of joy that somebody enjoyed what you created. You know, like it or like it inspired them or it meant something to them. Like it just brings you a sense of joy in in, in some way. So yeah, I agree. I agree with what you said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. It's it's funny how how because how like I said it before. It's funny how two uh, complete strangers basically. Because like you said, I watched uh, some of your videos, especially last year. And then, uh, like I said, I started watching less, but not just you. I started watching less uh, of everybody. Reason being because I wanted you were to creating. focus more on my own content because I, I started to. Uh, cram up my mind with content that others produce that I kind of had like a blackout like I was like okay what what am I going to do now you know because there are so many creators that are far better than I uh, am right now or that I'll probably ever be you know and then uh, I made a video about uh, it was around Christmas I think it was a video about all the Christmas deals if you haven't checked it out and you've got a few minutes left go check it out oh, for sure, yeah. 
I, I'm talking about the, 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 the bigger YouTubers. I'm using a couple of clips as well from, uh, let's say, um, I think it was Sarah Dietschy, Mehdi Apoya, Peter McKinnon, and uh, MK, MK... MKB. PhD? Yeah, MKB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they, just a small portion of a clip there because of like uh, the Huawei and the Samsung, and I think I had Peter McKinnon say the GoPro, Mehdi Hapoya, uh, Hapoya the Ronin S, the Sarah Dietschy, the Fuji or something, and I, I used that to, uh, in my story because I was talking about all those deals during the Christmas season, all those adverts, all those sponsored videos that it can really affect you as a uh, starting content creator by, because imagine you've saved up a lot of money, you just bought some gear, uh, you did a thorough research on it, you checked it out, this is what you want to have and stuff like that. You go to the store, you buy it, and then you get bombarded with videos about other products that's supposed to be better or supposed to be something new and yeah. you'd be like, oh, what have I done? Maybe I should sell it. Maybe I should get a different lens, a different camera. And it can really uh, affect your creative creativity, if you ask me. Uh, so that's why I made a video about that. And that's why I also decided to watch less content from other content creators and focus more on the content that I create. Um, with the exception that I, uh, what I try to do is watch the videos of the people that show engagement on my videos. Not it's not because it's like a uh, one for you, one for me thing, or uh, if you take a candy, I want a candy too. But <laughs> yeah. more as a more as a appreciation to their loyalty that after a year they are still around, still watching my videos. And the least I, the least I can do to say thank you is to just occasionally watch a video of them, yeah. leave a nice comment, you know, and engage a little bit. And, you know. Yeah, oh, for sure. No, I I definitely, I don't want, like, it's it's hard. I mean, because I'm so focused on the, the, the art of creating and then also running a business, I'm sure you know, like, it's it can be hard to watch and, like, consume. So it's like, are you, you kind of have to, like, almost separate the two. Are you, are you a creator or are you a consumer, you know, like, Exactly. So, I mean, I, I try and watch as much as I can. It is it is definitely difficult, but I think that that it was a smart decision for you to to like kind of take a step back and be like, what do I want to do with my like creation? Because I know that we had had some conversations over like you know YouTube comments and stuff in in regards to that and like um, figuring out like you know what you wanted to do and like finding the time for it and i think a big thing with trying to find the time to actually create is like taking less time to consume um because yeah. you'll see you'll definitely see a lot of people talking like and i see like see a lot of the same people commenting not not just on my videos but like other people's videos i'll see a lot and there's like a lot of the like the oh i wish i had more time but, but you see them end up watching like and i'm not saying that you did this but i'm just in in, in just in general you'll see them watch like a bunch of videos and it's like rather than actually watching those videos like you could have spent those five or ten minutes or 20 minutes or whatever however many minutes or hours you spent watching videos you could have spent that on focusing more on creating or planning something out or shooting a video or spending a little time to edit so I I really do respect you for doing that and I think that I like that's awesome that really is awesome yeah. Yeah, it's like you divide your week into like a Monday and Tuesdays, X, a Thursday, Wednesday, for Wednesday, Thursday, a Y, you know, stuff like that. And because um, I've got a like, I've got a a, a real business, um, uh, which is a full time thing. Uh, then I started the video production thing. I just uh, I started that when I started YouTube. Uh, it's it's even in the Chamber of Commerce, and it's it's actually says like making movies and vlogs, like for real. Uh, and the reason why I did that was because I wanted to, uh, in my opinion, if you want to do something, you got to do it right. You know, it's like 200% yeah, yeah. or don't do it at all. So I just went to, because I already had a business, so I just, uh, I think it's called a trademark or just a second company name, you know. I had it registered uh, as a production company. I just to uh, kick myself a little bit in the butt some more to uh, really uh, make sure this is a success. Besides all that, so I got a full-time thing that I'm working on and I'm doing the YouTube thing and as you know, shooting and editing, everything by yourself takes up a lot of time, especially when you're still in the learning trajectory. Like I didn't know anything, like I said before, so 
everything takes up twice as much time for me because I got to watch a tutorial on how to do it and then I have to do it, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that, that really takes up a lot of time. And I've got a girlfriend and I've got a dog and they need time as well. So yes. I can't just be yeah. like- Dog time you know, is very important. Yeah, I can't wake up at like 5.30 a.m go to work like i've got a uh, a project right now because i'm self-employed but i've got a project closer to home right now but like last year i had to drive uh, one and a half hours at the least sometimes two hours yeah one way drive and then the same time back again it's a lot yeah and then i work nine hours a day and i had a uh, study so i i got my uh, bachelor of business administration last year oh congrats yeah thank you man uh, uh, next to my full-time thing you know next to my th full-time job so I had a lot of uh, travel time so I had work hours like nine hours then I went to school for one day a week then I had to study stuff like that then I had a girlfriend and it's so hard to manage everything and then eventually I was like I don't want to uh, I don't want my hobby to affect my life in a very drastically way so uh, I need to make sure that, you know, the dog gets walked, my girlfriend receives the love that she deserves, you know, and uh, that's another reason why I decided to watch less content, focus more on my own, so I've got time left. And then, uh, obviously, I've got a little bit better in editing and stuff like that, so everything goes a little bit quicker, but mm -hmm. I actually told my girlfriend, like, like two days ago, yesterday, I was like, you know what, honey, I'm just going to put my phone away uh, more often, I'm just going to either come home, have some dinner together, and then uh, like edit for an hour, hour and a half, and then just completely shut off from social media, from my yeah. laptop, stuff yeah. like that. Sit on the couch, watch some Netflix, do do things that couples do, you know, yeah. and then uh, make sure that your relationship stays stable, and then eventually you're, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that your mind will be more empty as well, which leaves uh, more room for more creativity, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely agree. And that's, it's funny that you kind of said like, oh, I'm going to stop. I'll put the phone away. Like I'll, I'll do this, that and that. Cause that's like kind of how I've actually been lately. And, uh, we actually, we've been going to a CrossFit gym recently. So we've been like working out and stuff. And, uh, the past couple times I, I haven't brought my phone with me and I like, I had like mentioned that to her and you know, at dinner, I, I try my best to not have the phone at the table. It is hard when you run your own business, as I'm, as I'm sure you know, and like yeah, people yeah, yeah. are always like, you know, hey, I need, you know, I need this, I need that, I need this, and like things are popping up last minute. So it does, it does get difficult, but there also needs to be that respect that like, no, at the end of the de at the end of the day, at the end of the night, like just like phone needs to go off, and if I need to respond to something, I can respond to it in the morning. So I, I definitely need to work on that. But um, that's something that I've also been trying to do as well. And like, we'll, we'll go watch like TV or Netflix. And I didn't watch any TV last year. Um, and like this year now I'm like, it's, it's, it's good time together. Cause you can, you can watch the show or you can have it kind of in the background. You can just have a conversation or you, you can talk about the show. Like there's just, I don't know. We just end up, it, it's just a good time. Like that is one of my favorite points of the day is like the end of the day when I spend it with, with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, man. Cause uh, a few years ago, I had I was in a relationship, and I I had to uh, sleep over in hotels a lot because it was just too far of a drive, you know. And then eventually uh, we broke up because a she couldn't really cope with the fact that I was away from home a lot, you know. Yeah. And b obviously yeah. there were a couple of other things, um, but that did make me realize that. Look, man, work is just work uh, and family should come first because if everything else around you falls apart, so you lose your job, you lose your project, uh, you bankrupt your business, God forbid, obviously, but stuff like that can happen, then the only thing that's left is your family. It's your wife, it's your kids, uh, maybe your mom and dad, stuff like that, you know? So whatever happens in life, whatever things you do, make sure that they... Um, uh, what's that word? Make sure they combine well with your family life because that's your basis. Yeah. That's where you go to every day after work, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, there should there should definitely be that balance, you know. Uh, it is, I mean, it's, it's, 
it's tough. And like, we're only human, you know? So like, humans are going to have imperfections. But yeah, I are. there should, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there should, there should still be the effort and there should, there should still be like some sort of progress towards getting a better balance. Cause I don't know if there's ever gonna be that perfect balance, you know? Like one will always kind of be, one, like maybe one week one's more this way, you know, it's just, it's kind of how it is, especially as like being an entrepreneur, but there needs yeah. to be that like, that, that try and the sacrifices to working towards that better balance, you know, and don't just say you're gonna do something, but actually do it. So yeah, this is a cool conversation. Yeah, yeah. thanks man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And obviously uh, there needs to be some kind of uh, understanding from your counterpart as well, from your significant other. Uh, Cause everything, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that everything you do in business in life is just for the benefit of the both of you, you know, you and your fiance to make sure that yeah. you've got a great life or that you can live a great life. Uh, and as long as the other, they don't have to say thank you for the opportunities, obviously, but as long as they realize it, they can maybe uh, put some things into perspective why you're spending so much time on a project or why you're working late for one night or stuff like that, you know? And as long as that's around, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's part of the balance as well. And as soon as you notice that it's going to be unbalanced, uh, then it's time for action if you ask me. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree. And I, I, I'm very thankful because she is very supportive of it and like she she does understand it and she does see that like I like my passion and love for what I do. But also yeah. I think a benefit to that is because she only works three days a week and her schedule is kind of all over the place. Like there's days where it's like she, we have the ability to like go out and get a coffee in the morning or go to breakfast or go do something together in the morning where we normally wouldn't if I was working at like an office or something, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah. or, or, you know, not working for myself so that there are, there are definitely are benefits to it, but that also be, that also comes with the work life balance. Like you, you know, like if you're going to choose to spend maybe this time with them in the morning, maybe you have to sacrifice yeah. a little bit more time at the end of the night. So there just has to yeah. be that understanding. That's so funny because I mean, before we started this whole conversation, I was walking my dog and then my girlfriend called me because she's out with, she's got a family there or something like that. It's nephews and nieces and stuff, cousins, you know. She called me, she was like, hey, uh, Rico, you wanna pick me up from the club? Because my nephews asked me if I wanted to tag along with them to the bar and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, fine, I'm, you know, it's no problem to me. And then uh, she was like, yeah, well, maybe, you know, um, uh, maybe it'll be uh, a little bit later so you don't have to pick me, because she wants to have a drink, you know, so I understand that. She said, well, maybe it's going to be a little bit later, so we're going to take a cab and stuff like that, but I'll let you know. And then I was like, well, but what about your car? She was like, well, the car is at the farm. Her sister has a farm. Um, and and, and uh, I was like, okay, so we gotta pick the car up tomorrow. She was like, yeah, yeah, we gotta pick up the car. And I was like, well, okay, but uh, uh, usually we discuss the weekend plans, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And I told her like, today I'm going out on my bike, I'm going to shoot and then I'm going to edit. And then on Sunday, I want to, you know, uh, go to the forest, have a nice walk with the dog together, stuff like that, because I really like to do that. And then, I, so I told her, I was like, okay, so, okay, uh, I got to pick up the car with you. Yeah, I was like, that's 30 minutes to, 30 minutes back, that's an hour. Then you want to go to the forest with me, walk for another hour or two, but I do have to make a video yeah. and I do have to put it up by 7 30 p.m you know so i was like yeah well i'm not quite sure if i can do that because and that's exactly what you say like if you do something uh, uh on 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 time schedule number one that means sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of time on on the schedule number two you know so yeah that's that's very uh i can recognize that man <laughs> yeah for sure yeah no i think that yeah that's that's yeah 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 cool so Another thing that I would like to know, because you've been doing this for a very long time, is what's the best experience you've had so far as a filmmaker? As a filmmaker? Yeah. Ooh, man. That's a good one. 
That's a good one. Oh man, there's been a couple good ones. I mean, I had the I had the opportunity uh, a few years ago to work for a band that was going on tour with a band that I really looked up to, uh, in, like in my high school years. Um, that was that happened. The band was called Circus Survive. I didn't work for that band, but a band that I worked for was on tour with them. So I ended up getting to meet like one of my favorite singers ever. So that was just a really cool experience. So I think that was definitely one. I, I maybe that might be it. That might be the coolest or most memorable or most impactful or I don't know. That was just a really cool experience. And like I have like a little pass from that tour that like I still have with me today. It was only like. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it was only like three or four years ago, but it was, it was, that was really fun. That was actually, that was a really pinnacle point for me because um, I was working at a video production company and that was the first time that I was ever, so I actually left that job to go on that tour. So that was the first time that I tried to do a full-time freelance. Um, and then for some reason I ended up like, it wasn't that I necessarily needed to, but I just decided to get a job somewhere else because I don't, I don't really know. I feel like maybe I got bored with it, but that was the first time. So it was kind of like a pinnacle, pinnacle moment for me, you know? Yeah, that's nice, man. And and so your video, that's an, that's one of the questions I have as well, because your video production company, is it something you do by yourself or do you have a team? So, uh, so <laughs> Last year I was, so I've been doing freelance by myself for a long, long time. Probably like, yeah. probably like six or seven years ish. Just doing like work for, for, I, I do a lot of music and bands and stuff. Um, in the past few years, we've kind of started to branch out. So during this like kind of span um, of those like six or seven years, I've worked two other jobs. I've worked at a video production company and then I worked for a tech company called StubHub, and then I went back to that video production company. So I actually worked at the video production company, went full-time freelance, worked at the tech company, went, left that, went back to the video production company, which brings us to last year, uh, 2018, I became a full-time freelancer, and uh, I think like nine out of the 12 months last year, I was full-time freelance. And then at the end of the year, uh, I started to do some work with a, a fellow colleague who worked at the video production company and we now started a business, uh, a video production company this year. So it's two of us right now, but we will hire like we do. There are people who I've hired in the past and we'll bring them on the shoots depending on what we're doing. But the, the team right now for it's called King Wolf Creative is our business is uh, my business partner, Justin, and then myself. What do you guys focus on? Because you said we're doing mu music videos, but we're branching out as well. So what's the yeah. what's the stuff that you're shooting? You know, feel free to plug in plug in your uh, your company. You know, sure, sure. yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of music videos, and that's because my background in music, like I kind of while I was playing in bands, I started working for bands and all that stuff. So that just kind of snowballed the more that I've worked at it and kept going and stayed persistent with it. So that's I think probably one of the bigger stream of incomes right now, but we also do commercials and we're starting to do a lot more commercials this year. And then we also do, and those are for more like local businesses. We, we've been working with an ad agency in our area. We also have like our own clients, um, but a lot, a lot of that has kind of like snowballed because we're working with this ad agency. And then we also do weddings as well. We'll offer wedding, wedding production, uh, Kind of more in like the summer months because in New England, you know, there's the seasons and everything. Yeah. So uh, more in the summer months and fall is when that occurs. But the rest of the year is music videos and commercial production. That's cool, man. So basically what you're going to do is like everything. So ads, weddings, music videos. I think those are the most popular things you can do, right? Yeah, those are the those are the three main buckets. We do we actually talked about this recently, like what would we would what we would want to do with like within the next five years or so, or where would we would yeah. we would want to bring the business. We're also actually we're also going to have a YouTube channel as well, where we're gonna put out more. It's going to be more like more video production, like actual production based rather than just YouTube production. More more behind the scenes of the music videos that we're gonna be creating and kind of like 
the process of that and why we're doing what we're doing. So that's another thing that we're gonna be doing and hopefully maybe one day that can turn into a thing. But we also would love to do a documentary one day and whether that's submitted to some sort of film festival or it just goes up on YouTube or, or if Netflix is a possibility in the next like five years or so, who knows? Um, but that's like one thing like within the next five years we want to at least start working on a documentary So that's that's like a big goal for us Cool man. Yeah, thanks yeah. man. Documentaries can be very Because uh, I thought about them myself as well. They can be very satisfying I think like if you have a certain subject it can be about anything obviously, but and if you have like a uh, if you've done thorough research and then uh, got the shots, interview people, or whatever kind of documentary you you are going to do, obviously, and then I think that will uh, be something you can be be very proud of, you know. Yeah, there's. I mean, that that'll be very interesting to see what we would exactly do with that, because there's the opportunities for documentaries are endless. Like you could make a documentary about anything nowadays. You know, you can make a documentary about an orange juice and, and where it came for an orange and where it came from and then And the story behind grew. oranges. Yeah, like there there's a story like there's a story behind pretty much anything, so it's kind of crazy. So it would just be I don't know, that'd be a really really good step for us and maybe that could potentially uh, open up more opportunities, but that that would be a really like you said a satisfying thing to do, you know. Even if we just did one, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so I got two more questions for you. Um, one is, if you had unlimited budget and unlimited time, what would you make? Whoa. That is, unlimited budget, unlimited time, I can make whatever I want to make. Yeah. That is a really, what was that? And what would you create? What would I create? Man, that's a tough question. Cause a part of me would say, well, if that's the case, like probably I'd pro that would probably be the opportunity to do a documentary or something like that, you know? But then a part of me is like being a musician and everything. I just feel like I, I right now I don't have the time to actually focus on doing like any sort of solo music cause I want to do that. So it'd be cool to like, if I just had a budget to really invest in a, in a crazy, like, collaboration with some crazy artists and make a crazy song and then make a crazy music video for that song so it would probably either be like crazy music video like for for me myself um or uh a documentary it'd probably be either one of those cool <laughs> yeah and and it would be shot on like something ridiculous like a red or something you know yeah yeah, yeah. those are expensive <laughs> yeah i mean you said a limited budget so <laughs> yeah where, what do you use for your uh, professional shoots? Do you use something else than what you're shooting with right now or? No, so this is, well, yes and no. So what we own is we both each have a Sony a6300 and we just made some purchases recently. Um, I'm actually recording this right now with the Automos Ninja. So we're able yeah. to record in ProRes 422, which is just a better, it's just a better image. And I actually did a test, put a video out on it. And I was really surprised. The colors just look a lot better. But yeah, the Sony a6300 is the main camera rig. And we have it rigged up, so it's like a cinema camera. Like, we have a big V-mount battery on the back. But we also yeah. rent. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also rent cameras, too. Um, we rent the Canon C200 pretty frequently. Oh, really? Yeah, so if... if, uh, if it's, it's more particularly for music videos. It's easier to, to get that for, uh, allocated for the budget. Um, so usually what will happen is like somebody will come to us and we'll we'll figure out how much like how much of a budget they have if, if it's workable what they want to do and then from there we kind of allocate like they have this is how much they have this is how much I need to take home at the end of the day this is how much the business needs to take home at the end of the day Justin whoever else we need to hire all that stuff do we have anything left over to maybe you know rent a camera or they'll come to us and they say like we would like to like we would like to shoot on this camera or this style of camera. Um, but at the end of the day, it's kind of, cause usually I'm the, the, the DP, the director of photography and the director. Yeah, so it's it's usually up to me who's making those decisions. So depending on, you know, the style of the shoot and the budget we have, I kinda, cause Justin is like the more of the producer. So he's like 
this is how much we have, this is like, this is all the things that we need to do, this is all the things that we, the people we need to pay, and then from there, like I, I say like, how much do we have left over for, you know, like a camera rental. So then from there we'll figure that out, but usually we rent the Canon C200 because um, you have the ability to shoot in uh, raw light on that, which is a 12-bit codec in 24 frames per second, which is really sick. Um, but yeah, right now it's just the Sony a6300. I would really like to look at the a7S III whenever that comes out, whenever that gets announced, if yeah. it gets announced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of the, like the H7R3 or the a7 III, it was between yeah. that one and the uh, GH5 that I've bought. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I should have bought it. Um, but so far I'm liking the GH5 as well. It's not very good in low light, but obviously you can play around with lenses and stuff, but. Yeah, the, I mean the GH5 is, it's a great camera and that's, I've, I don't know. Cause there's like, so the reason that it's not so great in low light is cause it is a smaller sensor. Sensor? Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, and then that's like an aspect of the, of the Sony cameras. But, yeah, cause um, it's full frame, yeah. But you also, with the GH5, you have, the ten, the ability to do 10 bit, and and it, it's more like a, it's more like a cinema camera than the A7 III is. You know what I'm saying? So, it might have been a smarter move for you to go with the GH5, honestly. Yeah, well, the reason why I did it is obviously, yeah, I can shoot in 10 bit. I'm not shooting in 10 bit right now, but I could. But yeah, yeah. But the the whole reason was, and it might be stupid as hell, but was a flip screen. I couldn't oh. stand the fact. That the Sony just, I, I couldn't believe that they didn't just, you know. Yeah, no, I, I mean, cause I don't have, I shoot on Sony, I don't have a flip screen. And I, for the most part, like when I stick on the 16 millimeter, I don't have to worry about like my frame too much, but focus and exposure, um, it's, it's kind of a bummer not to be able to see those things. Before I got this lens that I'm shooting on right now, I used to have it's actually back on that shelf back there. I, I had a different lens and it wasn't the best with auto focusing or face detection. And it was just kind of like, there's so many times where I was editing a video and I was like, I really wish I was in focus right now. You see? Yeah. yeah. And that's why I could, and, and uh, maybe people will give me hate right now. Like, oh, the GH5 sucks in auto focus. It doesn't, it's got an update. It works fine, just make sure that which I didn't today. I was what, reviewing my footage and I was like, I wish I wasn't focused. So, but yeah. if you use like, I, I use the, uh, right now I'm using the Leica 12 to 60 millimeter. If you put it on aperture three or yeah, 3.5, focus is not an issue, man. The autofocus is just Oh fine. yeah. Maybe you'll see a little bit of micro hunting maybe, but if you go below that, then yeah, obviously the camera will have more difficulties keeping you in focus if you move around a lot but other than that I'm 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 more than satisfied I had a Nikon D5600 uh, before this that autofocus was bad as hell so yeah for me it was it's a huge step up so but then again obviously the price difference is 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 uh, like a, a couple of well maybe a thousand euros I think because I've got the GH5 for an absolute steal because what happened was, I'm sure they won't watch, but what happened was, this is an awesome story, man. What happened was, I saw a, uh, we've got a local store, and um, yeah. they had they had it priced on their website with the Leica lens, because you've got two versions, right? One is with the Panasonic lens, the other one is with the Leica lens, and the Leica lens is more expensive. So, I was checking it out, and then Amazon said 2,150 euros, but their website said 17.99. Wow. I was like, exactly. I was like, how is that possible? So I wanted to order it, but then they took it offline. And I was like, oh, I'm sure they know they, they messed, messed up. Because the, the 17 dollars price is with the Panasonic lens. But what happened was, I did this before. I messaged their uh, local department and I was like, hey, my name's Rico, blah, blah, blah. I'm interested in the camera, but I saw you guys took it offline. Do you still have it? And then they sent me back. Yeah, we still got it. It's, it's in a, our shelf, like in our display case. Do you mind that? And I was like, well, it's in a display case. It's locked, you know, people can't just touch it, stuff like that. I was like, no, I don't mind. Please reserve it. I'll come check it out on Sunday. 
So what happened was, because that price was ridiculous. I was like, that's like yeah. to to like 350 euros cheaper. I was like, I'm never going to get a deal like that. Not even on Black Friday. No. So I went. So I went to that store. I checked out the 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 um, the the camera and the lens. And guess what? The lens looked like it was like someone sneezed on it. Oh my I god! In a, yeah, I was like, how is this new? I mean, how is this in the display cabinet? Someone must have sneezed on it because it, it had like dots all over the place. Then the guy said, well, let me take it out back. Let me clean it up for you and then we'll have a look. So he did and then he came back and I was like, and this is his mistake. He was like, well, I'm not quite sure if this is just a little bit dirty or if it's a problem with the coating of the glass. And I was like, well, yeah, you know what? It's supposed to be new. I don't want to have it if it's got problem with the coating. And then he was like, well, I can, uh, uh, someone from Panasonic is coming over and then he can have a look and then maybe take it with him and I'll let you know. I was like, fine, because still I was, I was thinking about their price. I was like, I'm never going to get a deal like this. But listen up, the story is going to become way better, right? So a, a week or two went by, I called them and they were like, no, it's still in repair, stuff like that. I was like, okay. Two weeks later after that, so we're one, more, we're one month ahead in time right now. They told me, well, you know what, uh, Panasonic didn't take the lens with it. The lens was still in our shop. Yeah, exactly. The lens was still in our shop, uh, but I had a look, it's new. But uh, because we had you wait for a month without a reason, I'd like to offer you another 200 euros discount. Whoa! So, but it gets better, right? Listen up. So the camera with the Leica lens, uh, was costing me 1599 euros. Wow. Right? Wow. So I went to the store and guess what happened? I checked it out. I checked out the, uh, the, the lens and it was still dirty. It was the exact same lens. They didn't do anything with it. So I was, I was very bummed out. I was like, well, you know, how is this possible? You made me come here for nothing, stuff like that. And then they said, well, we'd like to offer you a, um, a service that you can bring it in with a, a specialty uh, repair shop. They can repair it and then you can send us the bill. And I'm like, no, why should I? It's supposed to be new. Now I've got to make some effort to, you know, get it to work or get it back in shape. I don't want that. You know what? Why don't you extract the uh, price of the lens from the entire set and then I'll buy the lens separately. And they were like, okay. So then they withdrew like 700 euros from the from the uh, price package. So I eventually I paid 850 euros just for the body of the wow. GH5. <laughs> and then I went and bought the lens for like 699 and then eventually it still cost me like 1599. But 1599 compared to uh, 2150 euros on Amazon, it was a steal man. I can't, I that can't is believe it. crazy. That wow. That's why I bought it. Yeah. There you go. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was very excited about that. I'm pretty sure they didn't know what they were doing. No, <laughs> what, what a they story. Were doing. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Dang. It's, it's the best deal I've done in my life. So, yeah. That's a really good deal. That's a really good deal. Yeah, you <laughs> basically got like $600 off your camera. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. That was nice. All right, man. Uh, the final thing I wanted to ask you, and we should wrap it up because we've been we've been shooting for an hour. <laughs> I gotta edit everything as well, man. Yeah. So I've got one more question for you, which is, what's next for Burke Cullinane in 2019? Um, I definitely have some. So I I definitely have some cool things going on. Uh, I have something cool. I don't know if I can really necessarily talk about, but I am going to California in may to do some collaborations so that's what i'll say with that um gonna be gonna be doing a, a few collabs here and there with some friends that i've done some videos with in the past um some friends that i haven't done videos with yet and some new friends who yeah i'm just really excited on what we're gonna be doing so that yeah that's like that thing and then the business so it's just like videos just more videos trying to do three videos a week uh, if I can and then obviously like if I can't I want to focus on doing at least the Monday challenge and one vlog So I'm doing at least two to three videos a week 
and then focusing on the video production business with the music videos and commercials and all that stuff. So really just pump as much videos out as I can and just have fun while I'm doing it. Awesome, man. That sounds good. So you've got a lot of good things coming to you in 2019, that's for sure. Yeah, so far we got, we have some really cool things planned so far. So I'm really excited to see what the second half of the year is going to bring us, you know? Cool, man, cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Hi, right, man. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate having you on my show. I had a blast uh, talking to you. It was very interesting. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a th few things as well. And what I liked is that basically two separate persons two different persons have the same ideas about certain things about youtube filmmaking so it's definitely a plus so thank you for that man dude thanks for having me really appreciate it